Today we'll be looking at the first language English paper from October, November 2019. This is the O500 variant 2 of paper 2. So, before we look at the first question, I would like to ask everyone watching this to first read passage A, Adventure Cruise. Read the passage before continuing with this video. So, looking after reading the passage, you will read this question. And uh, you are Willie, the trainee Inuit guide, and you are supposed to write a letter to Eska. You have to begin your letter with, Dear Eska, we have just come back from another tourist cruise around the Arctic, and you have to start with this. Write 250 to 350 words, 15 marks for content, 5 marks for quality of writing. There are three criteria that you need to talk about, where you took the tourists and what activities were organized for them, what you think the tourists expected and how far you think they were satisfied, your thoughts and feelings about Adam as a tour guide. Before we go into each individual criteria, for every single criteria you will need points. And you don't just talk about the point itself, you have point, you have the point, and then you have the details. And after the details, you have developments. So, what is a point? For example, in the first, first case, where you took the tourists and what activi activities were organized for them, your one first point would be your boat journey. You took them on a boat journey and they were on an ice break, an old icebreaker, a Russian ship. That one is the detail. This would be a detail. Russian ship. A detail is something that is very specific that you take out from the text. Whereas the development, on the other hand, is a sign, is a way to show your own create, uh, critical thinking skills, to show that you can think and infer information from the text that's not directly stated. This is the difference between detail and development. So the development in this case, you have a boat journey, you have an old Russian ship. What comes to mind? Perhaps the ship is resilient. Because people think things made by Russia is, is long lasting, it lasts forever, or maybe the ship is really old and it's still functioning and it isn't particularly good, good looking either. It's a rather old ship that has been not maintained properly, at least visually. So, now, moving on to the second point. Now that we know what we need from each one, second one, we have land expeditions. So, have a land expeditions, what details can you give? They went to Diana Island. or you go, went on walks in Diana Island. And what do you think is the point of taking tourists to these places? It's in the middle of the Arctic, maybe they could warm up, or it's good exercise. Maybe you want your tourists to be less annoying because God knows tourists, when they're traveling and they have a lot of energy and they don't spend it, they will probably do something silly. So, maybe to tire the tourists out. Tire tourists. So they can sleep well at night and they don't stay up late so they don't miss the next morning's events because they can't wake up and because they slept late, etc, etc. Next, Another activity that they do is meeting lo locals. And what happened here when they met locals? They, they met on a canoe, that would be the detail.
and maybe you could also say he was shucking muscles with a knife. He's like opening up the muscle and getting the meat out. So, what do you think? Uh, what do you think is, as a trainee tour guide, what do you think this is? Do you think this is staged? Most likely, so this is staged. I mean, such a thing would be interesting for tourists to see. They want to, people, tourists go to see the, and experience the local culture. So they want to see how people live in reality. And the tour guides, the tour's job is to create an expectation and give it to them. Or maybe this one, and so they show this man shucking muscles on a canoe. And it gives people this impression, oh, this is how people live and things like that. But they might know it's staged, they might not, but all in all, they would think, oh, this is how people used to live at least, and they're showing it to us, or they would think, oh, wow, this is how people actually live. And I should probably change this. This is in brackets. Next point. So they also try traditional food. And in this case, it is caribou. And the detail would be caribou. Moose, see, see, the mark scheme also suggests moose stew, seal entrails, kelp as various uh, other de possible details. Mm. What kind of development would come from this? Perhaps the other team members, such as Willie or Adam, do not like this. prefers other food or maybe or maybe you can say that the, these foods are usually not eaten raw such as caribou seal entrails moose stew stew itself is cooked kelp would be really difficult to chew if it's eaten raw and here moving on what else did they do they also spotted wildlife So you're on a ship, you're sailing across the Canadian Arctic and you see different wildlife. So what did they see? They saw walruses and, and or uh, murrays, with, which is a kind of bird. And as someone who probably has never been to the Arctic and taking this cruise for the first time or maybe even um, maybe even from the big city, maybe very far away, seeing walruses for the first time, it's not a small animal, it's quite big. So you could maybe be intimidated or scared by it. I was intimidated the first time I saw the skeleton of an elephant in a museum and it was much, much bigger than I thought it was because I saw it only on TV. And I was only up to the knees of the elephant, so it was incredibly terrifying, and it was a skeleton, so it would ha actually be much bigger with all the meat on it. So it would probably be maybe awesome, an awesome scene, or maybe even intimidating. Do remember the word awesome, the... Uh, apart from being of just people colloquially saying, oh, that's awesome, cool, that kind of thing. Awesome also means something that makes you feel awe, which means makes you feel so amazed by what's happening, at the same time, a little scared. So this is one word you can use in this context. Last for the first criteria, we have views of the landscape. So what did they see? They saw glaciers. 
glaciers and once again it could be awe inspiring. Inspiring or awesome similarly or once again the tourists are probably from a big city it contrasts with their life in the big city because they're not used to seeing perhaps such wide open spaces completely white and grey glaciers are white maybe even blue sometimes grey with the grey of the mountains snow caps and the complete emptiness would be something that is at best unfamiliar to the to the tourists Okay, moving on to the second criteria. What do you think the tourists expected and how far you think they were satisfied? So, do you know this is a cruise, so much of the time that they, are, that they spend is sitting around on a boat. We mentioned earlier they went to Diana Island to stretch their legs for a walk because sometimes you get, can get cabin fever on, on the ship. But most of the time, the ship is traveling slowly, there is no rush. It is generally a relaxing mood. So, relaxing holiday. It's a relaxing holiday. And it's not, for uh, the detail says, it's not an exotic cruise ship. cruise ship where you do because this is once again remember this is an old Russian ship you don't have uh, you don't have things like slides swimming pools you don't have buffets indoor cinema uh, onboard cinemas maybe even a casino you don't have that so maybe we can think about Perhaps this is, the mark scheme suggests this is not what they ex had expected when they booked for the tourists. I would think this is not entirely the case because if you have a proper website, you have good marketing, you can sell. This is relaxing holiday, this is not a cruise ship. So this is for tourists who want to escape. Tourists who want peace. So if they want peace, they would take a cruise like this. No panicking, no rush, no early schedules, not a lot of noise, very quiet. And peaceful holiday to kick back and relax. So another thing the tourists expected. Sorry, this one will be matched expectations. It, this one reaches the expectations of tourists who want peace. So, uh, so moving on to the next point. Normally, tourists going to the Arctic, what animals can they expect? Well, it's the polar bear. So they're going to see the polar bear. And... They were thrilled. When a large male joined them. Male joined. So as a tourist who saw a pol polar po sees polar bears only on TV probably may not think that polar bears are that dangerous. Maybe because they're on the safety of the ship or then in a big group when they're on uh, on Diana Island. So the tourists were possibly most probably fascinated and not really thinking about being afraid of them and so on. Another thing they expected is probably sleds, traditional sleds. 
And these are most probably the ones where that were drawn by drawn by huskies. Uh, and you go to this far north, people are thinking, oh, the dog sledding is one of the things I can, I wanted, really wanted to do. And I want to avoid, uh, and people probably also think that, oh, these people up here are very far north, they don't use vehicles at all. So, they also don't want motorized vehicles. So this is something of a rather prevalent view of the people. So this is probably a uh, stereotypical, like, stereotypical, stereotypical uh, expectation expectation of what people will do in the Arctic because they'll be seeing these uh, mm, they'll be seeing these wild they'll be, they'll be doing dog sledding yes so and moving on they were also excited or worried by adventure according to the Mark Ski so they were excited Hit by adventure. So the things that they were excited by, the details that were given was icebergs or ice floes. Yes, it's spelled F L O E S uh, ice floes. And ice flows are basically when you have a current and you have ice floating along with the current and it's rather... Hmm, actually no, it's not really that. It's mostly ice moving as if it were water on its own. Not entirely like a glacier, but a glacier is a giant block of ice sliding down a mountain, whereas an ice flow is ice flowing on its own as if it were water, forming rivers of ice, but not one solid piece. And this can be on top of water, on top of rock as well. And in the text, they were hit by an iceberg. And there is, a, and it is very likely that this was deliberate. So they deliberately hit the iceberg to spook the tourists and the reason for this is it makes the trip even more memorable. They hit probably hit a very small iceberg and it didn't do any damage to the ship. The ship is very resilient, it's very tough. Nothing would have happened to it. So they did it and the tourists can go home to their friends and family and say, oh, we hit an iceberg. So this is something that they have a interesting story to tell, tell back home. Moving on to the last one. Yeah. Adam, your thoughts of and feelings about Adam as a tour guide. So, Adam, as a person, is very efficient. He is of, or very organized. The detail we can give is that he had daily meetings, daily briefings. He briefs everyone about what's going to happen today and what they're gonna do and what they can expect. So maybe a de development here you can give is that he is someone who's, who plans everything very well, plans things out. Or maybe he's someone, if you don't like this kind of thing, is someone who is too controlling. Control. Moving on. 
he's quite knowledgeable, he knows what he's doing, he knows what he's talking about. So he's knowledgeable. So the detail is that he picked out the root. Picked out the root. Maybe he cupped his ear, put his his arm, his hand, he turned it, made it into a C shape. He put it behind his ear. He made his hand into a C shape like this. Put it behind his ear, so to reflect more, to reflect more sound into it, so he can hear better. And he also put on a show to scare the tourists. This is the development. So all of this is just him trying to create a scenario for the tourists to become excited so that they get feelings and then they remember the tour because they, are, they were emotionally activated, either happy or scared. And these are the things that you remember most. And strong emotions are things you remember most, so he's activating their emotions. So, another thing that he is, is perhaps he is very brave. He has, he walks around with a rifle in his back, just in case the polar bears attack, for example. Rifle, strapped, on back. Um, and he's very pro so he uses this to protect the tourists and all of that. And another thing is perhaps a develop a development of this is probably if you look past this, this is his job. He's meant to reassure the tourists. Maybe he isn't really that brave. He just looks like it. So this is a uh, part of part of the act. Or maybe he thinks none of this is actually necessary. None of this is really necessary because they're completely safe, they, he doesn't need to be so tough. And so this is part of the act to make the tourists feel safe and so on. So he's also f a funny guy with a nice sense of humor. He, has, uh, he gave Willy the giggles at the very end. He, he made Willy giggle so at the end by saying you know, how do you, when someone asked how do you track these polar bears and he said uh, sat nav instead because the person asking was uh, the tourist yeah so you're Willy here so someone asked maybe thinking oh he, he, was, he tracks the polar bears by following the footprints n near the end and he says, he just replies with sat nav so it completely s shatters that illusion it's some, somewhat so sat nav is satellite navigation and this is it it's funny um, though this actually does contradict the act that he created. He's trying to show that, oh, he's such a skilled uh, hunter or a navigator of this area, and he says he uses satnav to find the polar bears. So he's using technology. It's not all of his skills, not him just looking at it. So it kind of breaks the immersion so like uh, or maybe he thinks the game will be given away hmm so he is also probably someone who's very convincing. Convincing, he distracts the tourists.
distracts the tourists at key moments and then uncle appears so it's likely he had cut the deal with uncle the remember the man on the canoe uh, with the muscles he profits from opportunities 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 yep okay and we have one final one is he is irritated by tourists Yes, it is his job and he's irritated by it. By so that's why he made the satin book. Oh, sorry, this is the detail. He made the satna joke. The so last but not least he is irritated by tourists. He made a satna joke. And he and he stays, he doesn't eat together with them, he stays very far away. And probably because it's tiring. If you're doing, if you're pretending to be someone you're not all the time, 24 7, you get tired very quickly. So, probably when he is staying away from the tourists, he gets time to be himself. So, can be himself when he is. So, he's allowing himself to shine through when he made the joke, when he is perhaps far away and alone, he doesn't have to pretend to be this super tough guy anymore. So all in all, you have six points from the third criteria, four for the, no, yeah, five for the second, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Did I miss one? Oh yes, I did miss one here. So there is one more criteria for the second one. And that would be and just a reminder, the second criteria is what do you think the tourists expected and how far do you think they were satisfied? So we had they had a relaxing holiday, they saw they, ex they wanted a relaxing holiday, they, they wanted to see polar bears, they wanted to see traditional salads, and they were excited by adventure. Another thing is that they wanted an educational experience. They wanted an educational experience of something they've never seen before, and The details would be that them asking questions. Them asking questions and... Uh, and why would the reason they would do that would be... Would be because they've never been there before. Or they were curious. Because this is a completely new exp experience for them. So, to recap, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five points for criteria three, five points for criteria, no, six points for criteria three, five points for criteria two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six points for criteria one. You don't have to write everything into the into the, uh, in your answer because you only have 250 to 350 words. You can go over a little bit, but try not to reach up to like 400 or maybe 450 words. That's a bit too much. So you need to pick and choose which points you like best. Remember to follow this, the title, I mean the, uh, begin, the instruction here, how to begin your letter. Don't forget to close your letter and end it and say yours truly, Willie, or your friend Willie, things like that. 
and we wanted to break them in paragraphs and write it as you would any essay. Remember to use your connectors, try to not use sentences that are too long, and so on. So that will be all. Thank you.